Hello and welcome to CivilNet. I'm here at the headquarters of the Development Foundation of Armenia with the Foundation's CEO, Mr. Armen Avakian. Thank you so much for being with us today. My pleasure. So I'd like to start off with a really simple question, which is what is DFA? Uh, DFA is a TRO, a Trade Representative Organization. Its, uh, its foundation, its mandate is created to promote uh, foreign direct investment, foreign project investments, and exports. So if I have to summarize it in one shot, it's the, the projects and marketing arm of, of Armenia. If you could sum up the priorities, the mission and vision, could you just tell us about that a little bit? Uh, the mission and vision is changing at the moment, so we're, we're going through a change process. Mm. Uh, we had tourism as one of our mandates, or tourism promotion, right. which we don't anymore. And we're moving more towards a project-based uh, work rather than simply uh, events and marketing and forums. So I have to summarize it in one. I would say that our main objective is to bring foreign capital into the Armenian economy, be that through exports or foreign direct investment. Right. And what specific projects are in place to achieve that goal? There's multiple projects that are being run. Uh, so the, the biggest one is the Noi uh, Ethnographic District. Right. Uh, I think that's the one that, that we have more interest in when it comes to investors. So it's, it's more actual, it's going to happen, it's real. Uh, there's multiple other projects. We're working for some projects in Gyumri. We're, looking, we're working on some projects in Vanazor. Vanazor is fairly new. Uh, we have the master planning of Vanazor overall, so we're trying to figure out where we can uh, put in the, the private investor piece of it uh, and little by little start promoting it. Right. And could you go a little bit more in depth about specific strategies that DFA has in place in order to attract more foreign investment to Armenia? Of course. So what we're doing is, there, there's a couple of things. The first thing is that we're, we have a business consulting unit now within DFA that will actually take the projects and, and filter them, uh, make them more uh, real, so do a reality check, if you will, due diligence. Uh, and we ask the, the same questions that an investor would ask. So is this IRR real? What about co-financing? Where can I get you know, debt financing and things like that, uh, which we can actually help them do. Uh, and then it goes to my marketing team, it gets packaged, and the key here is that it gets sent to my sales team. Now DFA until today, uh, until about, about six months ago, we've only had one or two representatives outside of Armenia. Uh, currently we already have 16 and we're moving on 50. Uh, we're going to hit that 50 number by the end of this year, at least that's the target. Um, so if, if, you know, if there's Armenian networks like uh, AGBU for example, that's philanthropic, or uh, ANC or ANCA, that's more uh, lobbying and, and political, we're, we're aiming to create a, a large global network of Armenians uh, on a commercial and business basis well, that will then promote, sell uh, projects uh, or talk to different distributors and, and talk to different buyers about exporting Armenian products. Right. And you mentioned marketing Armenia to the world. Can you talk a little bit more specifically about that? What is the, the brand of the country that DFA is trying to put forth? Well, at the moment, what we're, we're working on, there, it's not yet there yet. It's still cooking. It's raw. Right. Um, but we're working under the assumption that there's a couple of things that we're very, very good at that, that creates competitive advantage. Number one is the people, mm. who we are as Armenians. We are creators. If Germans are engineers and Italians are designers, we are creators. We are innovators. It's what we do. We created the automatic transmission. We created the MRI machine. We created so many things that are used every single day all over the world that we don't take credit for and we should mm. as a nation. That's who we are. So it's the people. And number two is clearly we are the only country on earth that has no customs with Russia, the Eurasian Economic Union. We have a GSP and GSP plus regime with the EU and the USA. And we have ties with Iran. Mm. We are the only country on earth that can say that all three of those things, we can broker deals between all three of those different entities and stakeholders. Right. You mentioned a little bit earlier the Noi Ethnographic District, which mm -hmm. is a very exciting project um, that's kind of in the beginning stages. Could yes. you talk a little bit more about what that is? Uh, it's aimed, so the, the project itself is, the, the land that, that exists is behind Dalma Mall. So it will mm -hmm. sit right behind Dalma Mall. The idea is to create a, a tourism district, an entertainment zone, if you will, which will have a, a mix between residential, commercial, and um, cultural entities. And what we'll do is uh, we're going to break that down into little districts, and each district will represent a part of Armenia, a part mm -hmm. of our heritage, a part of our culture, a part of who we are, uh, so that the, when a tourist comes, um, they can not only spend more money, which is ultimately the business goal, 
but at the same time, they can take, take a little bit of taste of goris, a little taste of gyumi, a little taste of havla bar, wherever it might be. Right. Uh, and that'll also be uh, very attractive for them. And of course, uh, it's, it's a very large investment. So we're looking at about 100 to 150 million mm. estimates. Uh, at this moment, that's the, that's the underlying estimate that we have. Um, but of course, we're still in the planning phases. We still need the concepts, the master right. planning, etc., to get a final number. Right. And who are the main partners and supporters of this project? Uh, when it comes to investors, uh, one investor that's that's 100% will be Dalma Invest Group. Okay. They own the land, so it's understandable that no matter what, how the deal comes to, to fruition, Dalma will be a part of it. Dalma Invest will be a part of it. Um, when it comes to the other investors, there's a lot of interest, understandably. Uh, Dalma in itself as a mall drives a lot of traffic. So regardless of what you put behind it, there's going to be some money there. So there's a lot of investors that are interested in it. How the deal will come at the end to fruition and what the investor structure will look like is still negotiable at right. this point. And you were explaining that this project will bring the cultures of the different regions of Armenia to one place. Mm -hmm. Will the people of the regions also be coming talk about the, the employment opportunities available through this project? I can't talk specifically about the employment opportunities because again, we still don't know how many pieces of it will be residential, how right. many is commercial, how many is cultural, what the different games and elements of it will be. And so we don't have that master planning. It's very difficult to estimate how many jobs will be created. Right. Uh, when it comes to the different areas, the, the idea conceptually in terms of tourism development, mm. the idea is that it's, it's like a business card. So when a tourist comes here, the average is about three to four days. They spend about three to four days on average, and they spend about three, 750 to $800 right. per visit. We want to boost those numbers. That three to four days basically means that on average, they're staying mostly in Yerevan or around Yerevan, in Gari, Gerat, right. Echmiatsin, et cetera. So how can we get them all the way to Goris and make that three, four days, you know, five, six mm. days? Well, we're looking at this as more like a business card. So that little district will be Goris's business card to the world. So they can right. come see, get interested, and then we can actually then cross sell them a, a tour, cross sell them an idea to actually take them to Gorisa so they can see it firsthand. Right. And that transitions nicely to my next question, which is about equalizing levels of development mm -hmm. in Yerevan with the regions. Mm -hmm. how, do you, how does DFA plan to approach this issue? Um, yes, the equalization is, is, a, is key for the government, and because we take our, our signals from the government on what to promote more projects and more priority, that is definitely priority for us. Right. So the first thing that we've done is, as I said, we have this representative network going around the world. And two of my representatives are, one is in, in Yumri and one's in Bamanda. Okay. So I'll also start placing representatives in key locations around Armenia so that we can also get some project information. So if you have a project in Yumri right now or you have an idea for a project in mm. Yumri, I have a representative there that can work day to day on building that project together so that I can you know, channel it through my pipeline and get financing for it from outside. Um, so from that perspective, it's, it's priority. Uh, if the question regards to specifically Noi Ethnographic District, right. it's, it's a private land with a private investor, mm. and the government has no business in getting involved in, in private investments. Right. And what do you see as the most promising investment opportunities in the regions, not just in Yerevan? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. There's a couple. It really matters which region. It seems right. like we're, we're little by little, we're going to this clustering idea. Mm. So like, for example, around Gyumri, there's a lot of light industry like textile that's booming and is growing a lot. We have a lot of interest there in terms of investment. There is a lot of investment there. So we're creating these clusters. Uh, Gyumri, uh, touristic tourism is going to grow. So that's sort of where its bread and butter is. Uh, I'd like to also mention the, the technology center in Gyumri, which is right. also growing. Uh, they have, you know, Amalia a, a I, I li really like her. She's actually our representative okay. in Gyumri. So we kind of work with them on the IT sector in, in Gyumri and the tourism sector. So it really matters which region by region you go. Right. Uh, but the majority of it is, uh, I do see IT as a growth area. There's tourism. Uh, light industry is definitely a growth area and possibly even energy or mining. Right. I think that's a really nice note to end on. Thank you so much, Mr. Avakian, for Thank joining you. us today. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. And thank you for watching CivilNet.